to Finet Institute of Hospitality and Wellness. Today, we will be talking about ICMR, the Indian Council of Medical Research, and taking the topic of revised RDA guidelines. Now, so what is ICMR? ICMR is the Indian Council of Medical Research, and they have provided us with the Recommended Dietary Allowance, RDA, which are the levels of intake of essential nutrients, which is based on scientific research. And for that, they have taken the reference of men and women aged between 19 to 39 years old, height as per given below, weight as per given below. And from that, they have formulated what is RDA? RDA is based on a person's requirement for different nutrition. For example, a man with diabetes might require a certain kind of nutrition than a woman who is lactating. They require a different kind of nutrition for their own nutritional needs as per their height, as per their body and their other vitamin and mineral levels. So RDA is equal to requirement plus margin of safety. Now, what is margin of safety? Margin of safety is the gap between the actual intake of a substance by a given population and the estimated daily dose over a lifetime that experts consider to be safe. So, for example, the requirement for iron in Western countries is 10 mg for adult men and 15 mg for adult women. Whereas the Indian RDA suggests that the safe intake is 28 mg for adult man and 30 mg for adult women. The margin of safety is added to take care of factors, four different factors here, right? So the first factor is losses during the cooking and processing. As we all know, there are vitamins and minerals, uh, minerals that lose their potency as we cook and process them. Second is the short period of deficient intake. Third is the nature of the diet. And fourth is the individual variations in requirement. A person might need more of vitamin B12 and another person might need more of iron or vitamin C. So that margin of safety also uh, takes care of that factors. Now, our body needs three inputs to ensure its normal functions to maintain its efficiency. So they are mainly air, which is oxygen, water and food. And these are converted further into energy. Now, energy is the capacity to do work and food is what provides us with energy. The unit of energy is joule in SI and also calorie. And these values, one kilocalorie equals to how many kilojoules, you have to remember these values because these will be essential to you in your future. Now, what are the other things that you might need to know? Now, here we will be talking about the average fuel values of energy giving components of food. So, here we have the components of food, carbohydrate, protein, fat and alcohol. So let's take talk about the first table for now. Carbohydrate. One gram of carbohydrate holds 16 kilojoules of energy. And if you want to talk about it in terms of kilocalorie, one gram of carbohydrate carries four kilocalorie energy, right? And here will be uh, in Red above the table is given how you can convert kilojoules to kilocalorie or kilocalorie to kilojoules. So you might want to remember that as well. Now let's go back to protein. One gram of protein holds 17 kilojoules of energy. And fat 
37 kilojoules per gram for alcohol the energy value is 29 kilojoules per gram now let's take an example we are going to calculate the total calories in 100 grams of dal okay we are talking about dal here so these are the components carbohydrates fats proteins moisture minerals and fibers so there is 57.6 so dal contains 57.6 grams of carbohydrate fats 1.7 gram proteins 22.3 grams moisture 13.4 grams minerals 3.5 grams fiber 1.5 grams right so given here is the breakdown of the components that are contained in the dal so the next thing is calorie per gram now we just referred back to the first table given over there we can see that the calorie per gram in carbohydrate is 4 kilocalorie so we can just in write 4 over here for fat as we can refer back to the table it says 9 kilocalorie and then we can go back to protein and do the same and then all we need to do is multiply a and b values and then we will get the total calorie for each component of that and once we are done with that we are simply going to plus all these values that we have received and that will be the total calories in 100 gram of dal see that's very simple once you learn or you learn how to refer to these values you can easily calculate calories in any single food So now we will be talking about the total amount of energy required for women. For someone who lives a sedentary lifestyle, they only require 1660 kilocalories because they are not moving around, their body is not burning a lot of energy. So, of course, the energy required to sustain themselves is also less. Now, for someone who has a moderate lifestyle, they move around but they also sit a lot they have a desk job and but they still walk around exercise more they require 2130 kilocalories and for someone who is a very active person who walks around who exercises a lot of course their their body is you know using more and more energy every single time for every single exercise so they require 2720 kilocalorie now we also have to take in consideration for pregnant women and lactating women pregnant women requires an additional kilocalorie of 350 and for lactating women for someone who is in between zero to six months they require 600 kilocalorie more and for someone who is in the range of six months to 12 months 520 kilocalories more now here we have the protein that is required for an average woman then for someone who is pregnant in the first trimester second trimester third trimester and then lactating women these are the protein requirements for them These are the fat requirements and we also have the fat requirement required for a man for someone who is living a sedentary lifestyle moderate lifestyle and a very active lifestyle right so do keep these in mind as well now we will be talking about micronutrients these are the micronutrients required by an average woman a pregnant woman a lactating woman and a woman who has 
reach the stage of menopause. And these are the other micronutrients, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin B12, vitamin C, vitamin B9, vitamin B3. Now, these are the recommended dietary allowance of carbohydrates. And these includes for children, for boys, for girls, and all the different age groups as well. So, do keep this in mind. These are the calorie content of different foods. For example, 100 gram of grapes contain 67 calories. Orange, 100 gram of orange contains 47 calories. So this is for your reference as well. You can easily calculate from this how many calories are, for example, in a 200 gram of grapes. These are some more carbohydrate content. The protein content of some foods. The nutritional value and energy value of fats and oils. These are, you have to take in how much butter, how much ghee you are using, how much other processed fats are you using. You have to consider those as well in your calorie consideration. Now these are the recommended Allowances of carbohydrate and protein in different age groups. Vitamins and minerals. And water intake. As much as food is important, water is also essential for our dietary requirements. And these are the recommended guidelines for an adult man. They should be drinking 32 to 58 ml per kg of their body mass. Right? So you can take these value in considerations as well. These are the recommended dietary allowance for someone who is an elderly person who is older than 60 years and here is an activity for all of you you can record your food energy intake as a practice so what you can do is i have given divided this into food carbohydrates protein fat and kilocalories so uh, for example if you for breakfast you ate one bread one piece of bread and two eggs you fried it in butter you should uh, segregate all of those values and then add in the carbohydrates the proteins the fats calculate the kilocalories and you should do the same for your lunch for your snacks for your dinner and your last snacks and then you can total the total calorie intake of your single day and that will be a great practice for you so with this, we will be concluding this session and I hope that you understood the, the lecture and about ICMR and the RDA guidelines. So this is it for today. Keep on learning and if you have any doubt, do comment in under the video or you can simply reach to us on our Instagram as well. Thank you so much. Have have a great learning experience and we will see you soon.